spectators who is lucky to have survived seven grueling days in the Australian outback. So Matt, how does it feel to be back in civilization? It feels great, Ethan. Um, I'm glad to see my family and my friends, and it's just nice. Oh, I see. So your face seems to be a little bit cut up. What happened? Well... All right, mate, let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Car explosion. That's quite unfortunate. So how many people went on the off-roading trip with you? Um, there were three of us. There was me, and then my friend Tony, and my friend Ryan. Uh, we don't quite know what happened to Tony. Okay, mates, I think we screwed up. You might need to find some help. But they need to be fast. Tony, go get some help! Why do you want me to do it? Tony! Go get some help! I'll be back for you guys later. And Ryan died right after the trip, so I'm here. That was really unfortunate. I'm sorry for your loss. So what was the situation after the crash? Well, Ethan, it was quite tragic. Um, we just kept on getting into fights. We were panicking because, well, we didn't know what to do. We were far away from any civilization. So, I guess we just had to survive. So during those seven days to survive, what did you eat and how did you make shelter? Well, for shelter, it was quite difficult. On the first day, we didn't quite know what to do. We, like, uh, tried b putting a tarp on our jeep and just hiding under that, but it got way too cold at night. So we decided to take parts from our jeep, and we dug a hole, and um, in that hole we covered it with a tarp, so then during the day when it was hot, it would be cool under it, and during the night when it was all cold, th under the tarp it would feel really warm. And for food, we... did you have to go to survive and what did you do when you realized you were stranded? Were you able to cooperate and keep from panicking? Well, those are some pretty big questions, Ethan, but um, we had to go through some pretty rough lengths. I mean, we had to drink tarp water because not only did we use our tarp for shelter, but we also had to use it to purify our water. Luckily, Ryan was a Boy Scout. Um, as for what we did when we realized that we were crashed is, well, panicked. We were just troubled by the fact that, oh my god, we're in the outback. What are we going to do? And it's just hard to cooperate, but after a while, once the idea seeped into our brains and we kind of got the general idea of what's happening, we adjusted and we managed to survive for the most part. I was quite fortunate that Ryan was a Boy Scout and that you guys could cooperate. But did it ever occur to you that you guys would have to fight to survive? Well, yeah. I mean, there are quite a few dangerous animals in the outback and, well, the terrain is just so rough. Oh, wow. Did you ever encounter any dangerous animals? Well... one or two animals. And what animal would that be? I'd rather not talk about it. I see, I see. So, um, Matt, how did the accident occur? Well, uh... You know, I tripped on a sand dune. I don't see how you did that, but oh well. So after the crash, did you have any plans for survival? Um, 
You know, I was just kind of baffled by the crash. Being that I was a driver, I was cut up the most. Um, but after we kind of got ourselves situated, we had a couple things that we realized we were going to do for survival. What did Ryan think? Well, Ryan was the one who came up with the plan in the first place. Being the boy scout he is, he thought, why don't we send Tony out? So, why did you decide to send Tony out? Why did he decide not to send you? Well, we thought Tony was the best decision. So, could you explain the techniques a little bit more? What did you do to purify the water, or was there any fresh water on the site where you crashed? Well, yeah, we did crash by some fresh water, because in Australia, most lakes are fresh water lakes. But the water is still kind of dirty, so what we did to purify it was um, we had little buckets, or not really buckets, we just had whatever we could store our water in, and we put the tarp over it. And we put one rock in the middle of our storage, and it would kind of make the, the tarp have an indent, and we would put tension, so then there would still be that little indent, but then the rock just wouldn't fall to the bottom. And we would have two rocks to hold that tension, and we would scoop some water and just pour it in to the tarp, and then uh, only the water could really see through it because the sun would make the water condense and um, the condensation would drip into the, into the little storage container that we had while the rest of it just was on top of the tarp and went away. So, how did you feel when you were rescued? Well, I felt quite relieved because I was going to go home and see my family. It's such a shame that Ryan died the day after rescue and that Tony, he was never rescued. He, he never made it. Well, Matt, today we have a special guest for you, Tonathan Iyer. Please come in. You guys left me! Oh, crap. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. What? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, fine. What, what happened to you, Tony? I'll tell you, and I'll tell you telepathically. Oh. It's an interesting story, actually. When I left to get help, it took me about eight hours to find civilization. And when I came back to get you guys, you were already gone. So we went to look, look we went looking for all of you guys for at least about five hours, and then it took me and the help about another eight to nine hours to get back. And then I went to a restaurant with, with a TV and the news was on. So I watched for a little bit and saw, saw you on CBS. So I went to the studio and here I am. Oh, Tony, I'm sorry. You should be.